What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am bringing you guys a makeup tutorial to start off the new year. This is my first video of 2022 and what better way to start the year than with some glam, some chattiness, some new makeup techniques that I wanna share with you guys. And, and I wanted to start the year off with kind of setting my intention for the year. I wanted to share a little bit of what you could expect from me this year and just where I'm at. I feel like it's a very unique year for all of us just given everything that we've been through for the last two years. So I didn't wanna to put too much expectation on 2022, but I did wanna share some key things that I am looking forward to. This is the makeup look that I did. It is extremely glam and I was like, you know what? I haven't played with makeup in so long. Let me just sit down, do some glam, some glitter, some smoke you know, give you all the drama. And this is the makeup look that I came up with. So, but before we get into the makeup look, if you're new here, my name is Maria and I do a lot of lifestyle videos, beauty, fashion, makeup, home decor, all that good stuff. So if you're into that, go ahead and subscribe so you can stay tuned with all the other videos that I post on my channel. But without further ado, let's get into this glam makeup look. Alrighty, so let's get started with this makeup look. I already did one eye off camera just because I find it a little bit easier to do makeup tutorials like this because I already have vision and direction and I'm not like wasting time trying to figure out what shadows to use and stuff. So I'm just going to take a little sip of my coffee and let's get started. So all the shadows I'm going to be using in today's look is from the Master Mattes palette from Makeup by Mario. And then I'm using a few glitters from NYX Cosmetics. So first things first, I'm going to use my Too Faced Born This Way concealer to carve out my brow. And then my P. Louise Eye Base to use as the base of my shadow. And I find that this base really helps the shadows and allowing the shadows to really just show up and pop. And I have extremely oily eyelids. I mean, I have an extremely oily face in general, so I feel like this eye base really helps just absorb some of my oils and just make it a little bit easier for the shadows to blend together. I'm going to start with this shadow right here, Master 7. It's just a nice chocolate brown color, and I'm just going to pack it onto the outer part of my eye, and this is going to help us create the crease that we're going for and honestly the challenging part about doing one eye off camera is matching it so i'm gonna try my best to recreate the look sometimes you know they're not identical but you just do the best that you can so right now i'm just packing this shadow on the outer part of my eye and kind of inwards towards my crease area and don't be afraid to use a ton of color because we're gonna blend everything out as long as you're down to blend you can pack it on and I feel like it's better to pack on than not have enough and then just have everything because what happens to me when I don't pack enough color onto my shadow is I do too little color and then by the time I'm done blending everything looks like one color because I don't pack like the different layers on so don't be afraid to pack because we're going to be blending everything out and then I'm going to mix these two shadows matte 8 and matte 3 this is going to be kind of like my transition color in this instance to blend out this chocolatey color I'm going to go half onto the chocolate color and half onto the, my skin um, with these transition colors and just go back and forth until you are satisfied with the blending but that's sort of how I'm going to be achieving this look because I just find that it's the easiest way to do so and I'm focusing mainly on the outer part of the eye and then kind of dragging inwards whatever is left on the brush but I'm just using a back and forth motions and just blending the shadow away See, it's creating a nice seamless blend one thing that helps too is I have a fluffy brush handy to help me blend out the edges and this doesn't have any product on it so it helps kind of diffuse any color that's too harsh or any edges that are too harsh like did you see how that just blended that out i'm kind of just going to be going back and forth doing that right, to intensify the crease a bit more i'm going to go in with this more brick brown color it's the matte 11 and i'm going to apply that into the crease right, and i'm using a much more tapered brush so it's going to allow me to really focus it on the crease area so i'm going to start like towards the middle of the eye like this and just using back and forth motions this eye gave me a little bit of trouble because i have like a really big dry patch right here so it didn't allow the colors to blend too nicely i tried to highlight my i mean hydrate my eyelids before going in but i was still getting a little bit of patchiness so this eye is going to go a lot more seamless because it's not 
um, as dry as the other eyelid. So I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. This is probably the tedious part, but the most rewarding part because the more time you spend blending, you don't want to over blend, but you definitely want to spend a good amount of time just making sure that the colors blend seamlessly so that you're not like dealing with any harsh, harsh lines. So I'm just going to go back in with my transition colors, which are like the taupey ones. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just focus 50% of it onto the shadow and then 50% of it onto my skin. And then going in with the no shadow brush to just buff out any harsh edges. So I've seen people do this type of eye look and not have to do like an intense cut crease area for the glitter, but I'm not blessed enough to have enough lid space for that so i'm gonna go ahead and cut it and create that illusion that i have like a nice blown out lid space i'm gonna just take my time here i always like starting closer to the lash line just warming up my fingers and my hands to the brush and not rushing it because it's always better for you to be lower than to go too high and then you know kind of messes up the whole blending that we just did. So I'm just gonna take my time here. Helps to hold the mirror kind of under your nose so that you're looking a little bit down. You can kind of like outline where your crease is. Okay, I think I went a little too high on this one, but it is okay. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to create a look and have some fun. I'm gonna go back into this matte 11 shade, which is like that brick brown. But this time I'm applying it on a winged brush. It's like an angled brush. And I'm also gonna spray it with some spray. This is just the Fenty Beauty um, Baby What It Do. It's like a refreshing spray. And when I spray it, it's gonna give me like the consistency of a liner and I'm basically just going to trace the crease that I just created because I sometimes tend to lose the crease that we created when I do a cut crease so I'll just go back in to emphasize it and then we'll blend it out and I love using this Morphe M562 brush to blend out the crease because it's just such a nice dainty thin blending brush and it just fits so perfectly in the crease and it's blending just that area so you don't have to worry about it like blending anything else or you know kind of getting in your way so i literally just go back and forth in the crease to get this nice and blended now i'm going to go in with nyx glitter eyeshadow in polished pinup this is like one of their liquid shadows so it's very wet um but i just want to use this as my base so i just apply this on a morphe s4 brush which is just a flat head brush and I'm going to apply this basically where we created my crease. I'm not going to take it all the way out to the outer corner. I'm just going to apply it to the inner corner and a little bit past the halfway point. And on the ends, I kind of just like going like this because I feel like it makes the finish a little bit less harsh on the outer part of the eye. So now that that base of a glitter is on, I'm going to go ahead and apply some lash glue onto the entire area. And I know that sounds crazy, but this is how I'm going to have the other glitter stick onto the lid so i have a brush that is designated for glue because once i apply glue on a brush i feel like it is entirely ruined and i'm just going to pat the glue literally everywhere we just applied that glitter color which is basically all over the lid area i didn't apply too much i just applied like a light dab and then i'm just going to apply this nyx foil pigment in the shade dauntless this pigment is a lot more of like a dark grungy glitter which is not really the look that i'm going for but i do need something that's a little bit more of a pigment so that it kind of stands out so that's why i'm using it but we're going to top it off with a few other shadows that make it a lot more like of a lighter fluorescent color so i'm just packing it on okay so once the pigment is on i'm going to go back in with the liquid shadow that we used at the beginning that was kind of like our base and i'm just going to apply that over the glitter because this is going to kind of bring back that lighter finish okay so we're almost done with all this glitter but i couldn't find the exact pigment that i was looking for so i'm kind of like recreating my own color so i'm going to go in with jacqueline hill's armed and gorgeous palette and i'm going to use this vip shade right here it's like a really light white so this color is going to kind of help lighten up this entire lid space and give us a little bit more of like a lighter finish I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with my brick brown shade and I'm going to 
outline it even more because I feel like I still lost a ton of my crease. So I'm just going to fill out the crease area and then we're going to blend again. This is the great thing about this little shadow brush is it's going to focus it just on the crease. It's not going to get in the way of the glitter or any of the other shadows that we have on there because it's such a like precise blendable brush and as you can see I just brought back to life that crease. Okay so now comes the fun part, the drama. I feel like I'm using so many different makeup techniques but honestly that's what makeup is about is having fun and having fun with different techniques. So I'm gonna go in with this smoky liner part and basically it's super simple to achieve. Um, it really is just about taking your time and really making sure you're focusing it on the right area. So I'm going in with this NYX liner stick and it is in the shade pitch black and I'm basically going to start packing it on the outer corner creating that wing I'm just packing and then we're gonna blend it out and as we get further out on the outer part of the eye you want it to get thicker um, kind of like a cat eye like a wing but then we're just gonna blend it up so it doesn't look so harsh I'm trying to get as close to the lash line as I can and you don't have to worry about it being too perfect because we're going to be blending it out anyway. I know this is annoying, but I'm actually going to be digging into a different palette for the black um, shadow because the black shadow in the Mario palette gives off like this blue pigment and I'm not the biggest fan of it because it makes the black turn blue and I want to achieve like a very dark black. So I'm going into the Morphe Madison Beer palette and I'm going to use and I'm going to use the black shadow in this palette because it's a little bit more um, black. So I'm basically packing on this really small tapered brush. This is the Morphe M56, M456, sorry. And I'm going to start by packing it onto the outer part. It's like packing and blending motions at the same time. So you're like packing it on, but you're also going back and forth. Just whatever feels natural, I guess, or like for the area that you're focusing on so I'm packing and also blending and it looks crazy it looks insane but we are going to clean it up so don't be afraid to like really really blend until you do not see that harsh liner because we're going to clean it up if you need to like go all the way out here do that so I feel like that's good for me and then once we put the lashes on we'll do like a nice liner in there so here comes the crazy part we're gonna go ahead and clean this up. So I'm just taking a makeup wipe. So I'm going to use this to clean up the under eye. Look at all this fallout that I have. This is the good part about doing your shadow first is it prevents you from messing up your base. I don't know how people do their base first and then use all this glitter. The way that you wipe away is really important because it's going to create the shape that you want. I'm basically gonna follow my lower lash line and just swipe up. So like this and then upwards a little bit closer to the lash line and then upwards and then use this to clean it up it's going to look a lot nicer and more put together when we have our entire face on i'm gonna go ahead and pop all my lashes i'm using these sephora lashes they're house of lashes sephora in the style marigold why did i say it like that marigold it's marigold right, so eyes are done i put lashes on and i did a little bit of eyeliner on the lash line i just used the maybelline gel liner so i'm gonna go ahead and move on to the face the skin and we're also gonna get into the nitty gritty of the video the chatty part so i've been using quite a bit of primers lately for my combination oily skin the main primer that i use is the elf matte putty primer and i use this in the areas that i get extremely oily i also use the milk hydro grip primer and then the laura mercier pure canvas hydrating primer i'll try my best to share everything that i'm using but i am gonna get a little chatty if i I miss anything i will have everything linked down below and let's just get into the chattiness of the video i've had so much like just thoughts about 2022 so i just wanted to sit down and film kind of what i'm feeling the goals the intentions the resolutions you know all that new year stuff if i'm honest i'm feeling quite interesting about 2022 because usually most years like most new years i'm like oh my gosh i have a list of things that i want to do as a resolution and a list of things that i want to like accomplish but honestly for this year i didn't have a ton of stuff and i don't know if it's because like i don't want to set myself up in terms of having too much high expectation 
or if I'm just haven't thought things through all the way but I literally just have a few things that I know are like my top things that I want to work towards and I don't want to really like call them goals because I feel like goals are such like fact driven like you either accomplish it or not but I feel like a lot of the things that I want to work towards this year are more of like intentions and more like mental emotional things so there's really no way that you can measure those things so I kind of want to call them intentions and just like what my desires are for this year so let's get into it okay first things first I really 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 want to live fearlessly and I know that is so vague and it can be like like I don't want to be fearful of like traveling alone or things like that but I actually have more like intentional fears that I want to work towards and the main one is fear of rejection and fear of judgment those are the two things that I really 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 want to like overcome and just constantly challenge myself to not live from those fears because I noticed and honestly like it's just a recent epiphany that like has changed me so much I've noticed that I am extremely aware or too aware of myself and sometimes it's like too much self-awareness that makes me diminish myself because I'm too afraid of being me because I'm fearful of people rejecting me for being me and um fear of judgment basically like I don't want to be judged like for example sometimes I'll hold back on saying certain things because I don't want to seem too confident and make other people feel uncomfortable not to the point where I'm like cocky but just like really really simple things that I'll just like be in my head about because I don't want to be perceived a certain way I need to stop living for other people which is basically like when I do that when I think too hard about what people are gonna think or how they're gonna judge me that's literally what I'm doing I'm living from their lens and that's just not a way to live like life is way too short to be worried about what other people think and feel and like just be you and lately like ugh, it's been crazy I will literally be on my way home from a social setting and I'll literally tell Eric like was I too much of this was I too much of that did I cut this person off like too much or at all and it's so draining like literally like why do I care so much <laughs> you know it's not like I'm this rude person that just like is obnoxious and freaking like rude and y'all want to know what the real tea is the real tea is if I live out of this place right of being myself and being who I am and it makes other people uncomfortable then maybe they're just not the people for me really should not be around or surround myself with people who don't accept me for who I am I don't want to present this false self of myself you know what I mean so that's the real tea is if you're going to be yourself and people around you start changing or start like you know not accepting you and you genuinely feel like you're living the true honest unapologetic version of you then maybe they just are not meant to be in your life so i've been doing this new thing with my concealer where i let it sit there for quite a bit of time basically however long it takes me to do my brows which is usually like anywhere between three to ten minutes <laughs> it really just depends on the day and i feel like it really helps prevent my under eyes from creasing because the concealer kind of just warms up to my skin. It kind of just like sits there for a bit before I go in and blend it out. So I'm gonna let my concealer sit and I'm gonna do my brows really quick and then we shall continue. Okay, so now that brows are on, I'm gonna blend out my concealer and I just pat it into the skin. Okay, so similar to what I was sharing about like my first intention of the year, I also really, really, really wanna prioritize authenticity, but I wanna find a balance between staying authentic to myself and challenging myself to step out of my comfort zone i feel like it's a, it's important to have a balance because if i just do things that are authentic to me then i feel like i'm never going to take risks and everything that feels unnatural i'm just going to say no to but i don't think that's a way to live at the same time because i feel like taking risks is you know great and getting out of your comfort zone is a great way to grow. By the way, I'm using the one size translucent ultimate setting powder to set my under eyes. This powder is amazing. It really helps keep my under eyes nice and set throughout the day. I was using the Beauty Bakery one, but I realized like by the end of the day, I don't know if it's the concealer that I was using, but I doubt it's the concealer because I've been using this Too Faced concealer for a while now. 
Um, but I noticed that like my under eyes would be extremely creasy by the end of the day. But with this powder, I used it for the first time on New Year's night and I had like a 12 hour day. My under eyes were still nice and set. So I'm loving this powder right now. So yeah, I'm definitely trying to find a balance between staying authentic to myself and trying new things because like, especially with social media, like it's really hard to not give into trends that feel unauthentic to you because you see that they're working or they're, you know, performing well. So that's definitely something that I want to prioritize this year is just be me, be me, be me. <laughs> Funny because I'm saying like, I want to be authentic and just do what feels authentic to me but i also want to say yes more like in so many different areas like i want to meet new people more i want to explore more do more adventures travel more like not be so restricted but you know sometimes that requires stepping out of your comfort zone so that's my challenge for this year is just finding a balance and not like compromising who i am along the way I'm using this Ilia highlighter in Starstruck and it's a beautiful, beautiful highlighter. Look how nicely it sits on the skin. So nice. I feel like it goes well with textured skin because usually powdered highlighters like really emphasize my texture. But this one is just like a nice, just like buttery formula. I'm going into some more practical intentions, or I guess these you can call goals because they are a little bit more practical and measurable. I really want to read one book a month. I don't want to limit myself on the types of books that I want to read because I want to do fictional, non-fictional, true crime. Like I want to do a ton of different books. It's just kind of what I'm feeling that month. So I want to definitely do that because I feel like I do a lot of brainless TV watching, a lot of reality TV, and I like to do reality TV because I feel like after a long day of work, it's just such a great way to unwind. Instead of unwinding with brainless TV, I want to try to unwind with book because I feel like even though like you think brainless TV doesn't affect you or it's like, you know, just a way to unwind, I feel like subconscious, subconscious, subconsciously, it does affect you. I mean, anything you listen to, anything you surround yourself by, whether you intend to or not, it affects you. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more intentional about what I put into my mind and my body and my spirit. So I'm definitely going to be trying to read some more this year. I'm just creating some drama on the lower lashes. I'm going to finish my under eyes off with some mascara. Another extremely practical thing that I want to focus on this year is my fitness. And I really want to make it to the gym at least five times a week, which I think is really doable for me considering that like for the last few months I've been doing at least four times so just adding one more day I'm sure is not going to be that hard but that's what I'm all about this year is kind of focusing on goals that are achievable for me and not that are like completely out of my reach because I feel like the last few years that's what I usually do I'm like okay I'm gonna lose 45 pounds not 45 pounds but I'm gonna lose a ton of weight this year like just for, there were things that for me weren't feasible with my lifestyle, but now that I've created this lifestyle where I do like to work out and I do like to be active, I think it is feasible to just add one more workout a day. So that's definitely another goal of mine. I'm going to go in with my lips and I'm using Jaclyn Hill's lip liner in Toasty. It's like a nice brown and her liners are so creamy. This is a great dupe of the MAC Cork Lip Liner. And for lipstick, I'm gonna use Jaclyn Hill's Liquid Lipstick in Nudie. It's a beautiful, very like peachy nude for the center and just blend it out. It dries really quick, so I kinda have to work fast. So this is basically the makeup look. I'm just going to spritz my face a bit with the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I love this setting spray. I'm just gonna do a nice, just like that, and then kind of air it out. All right, so that's basically it for this makeup look. This very glam, metallic cut crease. Definitely a glam way to enter the new year. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I wish you guys nothing but the best this year. We have had a hell of a last two years and keeping my hopes up that this year is gonna be better for everyone. And I hope that you guys have a great new year and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.